as we begin our coverage of another NHL season on Sportsnet. I am so thrilled to be joined by Sir Charles Barkley and John Cooper. Hey, Chris, aren't you supposed to say two-time defending Stanley Cup champion coach John Cooper? Well, I, I really should, although that's understood in Canada. Who's going to be the host here? <laughs> I know. Um, I, it's still to be determined. I am going to try, but I, I have a feeling it's not going to take long hey, before, before this goes before off the rails. Before we get going, is it true that Shaq was more a uh, Seattle Kraken shirt? Oh, it's all over Twitter. It's Shaq in a Seattle Kraken jersey. Yeah. Yeah, we've got work to do, Charles. Well, you know, Coop, I want to tell you two things. Number one, I love all the lightning swag you've given me the last couple years. I want to thank you for that on Sportsnet. But now that you got a new three-year contract, I want you to start spending some of that money. I don't want no more free lightning stuff. I want better gifts going forward. <laughs> all right, hold on. So I did. I spent. I spent the money. I spent it. <clears throat> hold on. Oh my! What are we? What? Are, what? Are, what's happening? Going on. Oh yeah! Oh my gosh! Hey, I take back all the times I call you cheap. Now thank you for that. I love that. Okay, so I know probably some people are looking, going, "This is a hockey show." Uh, obviously, we understand why John Cooper is here, but what is Charles Barkley doing here? Some people might not realize, like you guys are actually good friends. Well. I know this gonna come as a shocker to you, Chris. We met in a bar. <laughs> this is my surprise face. Uh, we we actually met. It probably have been almost probably six years ago now. Uh, in, in L.A., they were in town playing, and I was with his brother and his dad. And we just sit and talk hockey for like two three hours. He never even mentioned to me he was a coach of the Lightning. That's how humble he is. And Chris, at the end of the night, he gives me his card. And I look at his card and says, wait, you're the head coach of the Tampa Bay Lightning? Why did you start the conversation with that for the evening? <laughs> and uh, and we've been together since then. And he, you know, I've been a big fan. I've been following. You know, just hanging with him, his, his dad was awesome. Uh, I actually like his dad better than him. <laughs> And I want to make one thing perfectly clear, Chris. Mm -hmm. I'm not a front-running bandwagon Tampa Bay Lightning fan because people forget when I first started being a Lightning fan, remember they got beat in the first round of the playoffs by the Columbus Blue Jackets mm -hmm. when they were the number one seed? Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, man, that's a tough loss. I think they got swept, if I remember correctly. Am I right, Coop? Oh, yes, you're right, Charles. <laughs> Thanks for bringing that up, right? <laughs> yeah, keep sticking the knife in some more. It's okay. Charles, I always say this about Charles. He's the only guy that can really say whatever he wants to whomever he wants, whether it's offensive or not, and they, they'll they just start laughing because they love it so much. He just has this way about him. Charles could be the guy that could go and have dinner with a pimp, a pope, or a president and get along with all of them. I sent him a text when we got hockey. I said, since I'm quote unquote a hockey expert now, I'm gonna start sending you suggestions. <laughs> I think you should play that Vasilevsky guy, Kucherov, Stamkos. I said, we're gonna be successful. You keep putting those guys in the game. Well, you can see he's, he's good at what he does. Yeah. I think Vasilevsky should start tonight. Oh man, I was the decision was tough, but now it's he's he's made it for me, so it's good. Well, John, we know how great a basketball player, strong power forward Charles was in his playing days, but I've got to ask, if he were a hockey player and he was part of your Lightning roster, like who on your team is most like what Charles Barkley was as a basketball player? Who would you equate him to? Oh man. This is tough because it's probably a combination of players. But there's a big part of me that wants to say Pat Maroon. I thought you might for, go there. For a number of different reasons. And then there was a big part of me that wants to say Barkley Goudreau, even though he's not with us any longer. But 
he would have he would have fit the mold. And then he's probably got some Braden Point in him too. Hmm. That's a pretty good combo. And I got a question for John because you won back to back Stanley Cups. How do you keep your team motivated? And a big motivating part for us last year was, all right, well, it's so easy to sit here and say, okay, we climbed the mountain, we slayed the dragon, we won the Stanley Cup, and now you can exhale. Hey, we're good for a few years. Media won't be on us. They're the recent Stanley Cup champion. It's, it's okay. Like, you get to slide by. Or you're the team that says, you know what? Do you want to hit, like, rare air? Like, do you want to be special? Because not too many teams can do that. And, and I think the, one of the greatest teams in the history of the game were the 1980s Oilers. They couldn't win three in a row. I mean, they did win five in seven years, which Gretzky often reminds me, but they, they, they never won three in a row. And so you go through it and it's like, you're, you're starting to become, now you're, it's all about, it's legacy, it's history. It is doing things that nobody has ever done and we're trying to put ourselves in that position and, and this group is highly motivated. Now, the point is you have to get to the playoffs first before you even have an opportunity to do that. And, and that is our thought process, you know, going into this season. I want to end with a couple of just rapid fire questions, okay? So, so just jump in. Starting with, who's the better golfer between the two of you? Me. I'm playing great right now, Chris. I'm playing great. I'm almost back down to single digit handicap. I don't even know what Coop's handicap is, but I'm playing so good right now. I, hey, I'm on fire right now, Chris. John? If you, if you made me play left-handed, no, I think I'd still be better. Hockey players and field hockey players have a huge advantage. You know, I'm out there wrestling with Carl Malone and Larry Bird and Patrick Ewing. They just out there perfecting their little golf swing oh, when you play field no. hockey and, and, and hockey. You know, basketball, like, here's the one thing. What he doesn't realize, basketball, like, we play with a puck. They play with a ball, and they put it through a little sphere, just like golf. Put the ball in the sphere. Like, that's what you do. I don't know how you guys can't grasp that. Well, well, wait a minute. You mean you, you hockey players who got that big ass net that anybody should be able to put it in? Okay. You're, to, you're, wait a second. Your sport is so easy. They actually put in a rule called goaltending, so you couldn't cover the net. So you like you're not even allowed a goaltender. I feel this conversation hey, could go hey, on that's forever. Well played, right there. That's well played. <laughs> okay, I want to ask. Um, who's the most famous person each of you have in your iPhone contacts? Probably Spike Lee and Wayne Gretzky. And hey, and John Cooper, two-time <laughs> defending Stanley Cup champion. That's pretty impressive, John. So I, I have zero chance of uh, probably winning this one. So I'm going to say my wife. Aww. Just to <laughs> Okay, that's a good answer. Last question I want to ask is, if you can name, and I'm going to have Charles, you name your top three all-time favorite NHL players. And John, I'm going to ask you for your top three all-time NBA players. Charles? Well, my favorite hockey player ever is Ron Hextall. Uh, I love that dude. He's one of the few jerseys I got in my house. And I got to say, Wayne, and probably my third favorite hockey player is a guy named Craig Connolly. He's one of my best friends from Arizona. He never even played in the NHL, but he tell me he's one of the greatest hockey players ever. I think he's full of <laughs> but I'm going to say Craig Connolly. All right. And John, your top three NBA players. What did you tell me the two words you like we couldn't say and you couldn't get through the interview without saying one of them? Just can't help himself. Oh, my bad. I forgot about it. Wait, does that translate in Canadian? <laughs> there was two words. We, that's all we had. Two words. All right. I'm going to leave Charles out of this because I thought the greatest ball that I, when I fell in love with basketball was in the 80s. And I thought the greatest rivalry was Larry Bird versus Magic Johnson. 
to me, when I was growing up, I couldn't believe it. Uh, and then I would have to say, again, like, I, I honestly, I would have to say, if, if I'm leaving Charles out of this, then it would have to be Michael Jordan. He was beauty in air when he played. He just, he was a baller. That's all I can consider here and say. Thank you again so much, you guys. I really appreciate it. John, have a great season. Charles, have a great season. We'll be watching you both. All right, babe. Y'all take care. Koopa, I'll see you later. All right. Thanks so much for having us. See ya. Thanks so much.